Hello and welcome. Now, one of the key concepts of Microsoft Fabric is one lake. Now, what is one lake? One lake is basically a single unified data lake for the whole organization, right? So what does that mean? Now, since it's a single unified data lake, it means you need to bring or hydrate this one lake with all the data from your organization. You might have multiple data sources. You need to bring or hydrate the one lake with all this data so you can use all the features or experiences available within Fabric, like the data science experience or the data engineering experience or AI experience or whatever it, whatever will come in future, right? Now, Fabric provides multiple ways to ingest data from data flow to notebook and data pipelines. And within data flow, depending on the volume of data, you can use fast copy or without fast copy. So there are a few options available. Now, we need to know which of these options to use when, what scenarios applies to which of these options. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do in this video, try to test out different scenarios and see what works best. When I'm trying to benchmark or when you try to benchmark or evaluate any product, you look at a few key criteria. Those are cost, performance, and time to market. And in the world of Microsoft Fabric, cost is measured in capacity units. And capacity unit varies by SKU. One capacity might have a different CU compared to, or P1, which is F64, might be different compared to F4 and so forth. And performance is measured basically in terms of duration. How long does a job or an activity takes? Now, as you can see, Microsoft says capacity units are used to measure the compute power available for each SKU and it lists the capacity units available for the different SKUs. Trial or F64 or P1 has 64 capacity units. And as you can see, the units differ by the SKU you pick. Now to create a benchmark, this is what I did. I created some constants, right? So I'm going to ingest data from Azure SQL to Lakehouse. And this is just a copying data. There is no transformations, just pure moving data from one from Azure SQL to Lakehouse. And I execute it, this process four times a day so I can average the duration and the cost. Uh, and what are the variables here, right? I use two different variables. One is the volume of data. So I tested this with a table with about 2 million rows of data and another table with 70 million rows of data. And I tried this across two different capacities, F64 or the trial capacity, and F4 capacity. And to get my measurements of CUs and duration, I'm using the Capacity Metrics app. Now, if you're not aware, Fabric Capacity Metrics app is a free app provided by Microsoft. You can install it. You need to have certain rights. You need to have, the, I think, Capacity Admin to install it. But once you install this app, you can get some cool metrics. Although I should say it's not the easiest app to start off with. You need to do some research and read up to figure out what each of the different metrics in this app is, but it's definitely useful. It's definitely a good starting point, right? So right now, if you see, I'm looking at the CUs and I've drilled down to a particular day and these are my different items that were executed. For example, this particular data flow executed four times. And if you notice, the CUs used varied each time I executed this job. That's why I ran this four times just to get good average, right? Similarly, if I click on the data flow where I have fast copy enabled, you'll see it's a, it's a lot more consistent. And same thing if I click on the pipeline job, you see it's pretty consistent. It's the same amount of CUs each time a pipeline was run. Now here I'm looking at a trial capacity or the F64 capacity, and I'm looking at the CU numbers for the 70 million data set. All right. So just to make it easy, I put everything in PowerPoint so we can easily compare the different performance of each of the different scenarios. Now here I'm comparing the 2 million rows of data in both the F64 versus the F4 capacities. And the naming convention is basically DF is data flow, PL is pipeline, NB is notebook. And this is with fast copy, data flow with fast copy enabled, and FC is basically yeah, fast copy enabled, and no fast copy is FC is fast copy. So that's the naming convention I've used. And if you notice, both in the F64 and the F4 capacities, 
the CUs used for fast copy and the duration. So both performance and cost is higher when we use fast copy compared to no fast copy, which is which was really surprising, right? Because fast copy is supposed to be faster. And since it's faster, the number of CUs used should also be lower. However, that was not the case, at least with 2 million rows of data. And notice that I did use force fast copy on this. It was not automatic. So I, because I, I really wanted to force fast copy and see the numbers on these, right? So th th this is what I saw. So basically you'll see that fast copy with data flow with fast copy is the most expensive, but data flow in general is the most expensive and performance wise as well, it is, it's the slowest. Whereas pipeline is, and yeah, for the most part, even a notebook is pretty close, uh, but pipeline, it comes in number three with, uh, with decent amount of CUs and it's pretty fast. And notebooks is definitely the cheapest and the fastest. Now let's take a look at 70 million rows of data. Now here, if you notice the data flow with no fast copy, which is the first one, no fast copy, 70 million rows, both in both capacities, it, the capacity really doesn't matter, F4 or F64, without fast copy is costs more and it's the slowest. With fast copy, it costs less and it's fast. Obviously, because it costs less because it runs faster. So, so if you're, you're running high volumes of data, definitely use fast copy with data flow. Now, notebook here is number three. So it did use a lot more. It's, it definitely costs a lot more, but the performance is pretty close to pipeline. So in both capacities. And, and of course, pipeline is cheapest and executes the fastest. Now, one thing to note here is you see the numbers, both in terms of CUs and duration. Really, capacity doesn't matter. It's the same. It's very similar. For example, you know, data flow with no fast copy it took, uh, took about 36,000 CUs. Same thing for capacity or F64. Same thing with the second one, data flow with fast copy, 17,000 in both. Notebook. Notebook, is there's a slight difference. I do see 2,000 or a little over 1,000 difference. Pipeline is <laughs> number is exactly the same. And the same thing with duration as well. So that's another thing to note is if your capacity changes, your cost or duration performance is not impacted. It's just that the more capacity you have, you could run more jobs, right? More activities can be executed. Okay, so let's look at this in a heat map just to make sense of it all, right? So basically what we re realized was data flow is the most expensive and performance is, is the lowest. Now, if you if you use fast copy within that data flow, it makes it makes it slightly better. Cost is still high, but performance definitely does improve. Now, data pipeline is is I think a good option, especially if you are semi developer or you know you are a kind of a power user slash developer. I think that's a good option to go there. And then notebooks of of course is cost is low, whereas performance is high. So that's really good. Only thing, time to market with notebooks is higher because it's it definitely is needs a certain expertise to it. You have to be uh, you have to have a developer skill set. Now, data pipeline, I've noted it as developer, but if if a power user has slight developer skills, I think uh, you know that can be a data pipeline. A developer slash power user can still work with it, but notebooks you definitely need developer skills. But having said that, you know notebooks is gives you a lot more capabilities. It's not very narrow, it's wide in terms of all the things that can be done. You could have your, you, you could do your data science with the data engineering and everything within a notebook. So it gives you a lot more options, but obviously since it's a high skill set, time to market is higher. So something to think about, but hopefully this gives you a good picture of which of these options to use when. And as usual, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out obvious.com.